coming up on Titans All Access. Will it be a homecoming fit for a king? Sunday could be special for Derrick Henry. Second-year cornerback Christian Fulton continues to make big plays on the field, but it's what makes him tick off the field that makes him a fan favorite. Find out more in this week's Nissan Insider. General Manager John Robinson tells us what it's going to take for the Titans to get their second AFC South win on Sunday. And even though Shane Bowen is young, he's surrounded by a veteran staff who's helping him to improve the Titans D in 2021. All of that and much more as Titans All Access starts now. The monster, Derrick Henry, sacked! Rashawn Evans, A.J. Brown to the house, Brian Tannehill taking him to school. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and another edition of Titans All Access. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. It's Jacksonville week. Love Jacksonville week. We always love Jacksonville it's week. It's so fun. The rivalry, the game's always intense. There's always something exciting that happens in Jacksonville. And when we go to Jacksonville, we're always reminded not only of the Titans Jaguars rivalry, but of the fact that Derrick Henry, the king, is from the Jacksonville area. It's actually Yuli, Florida, and you've been there. I have been there. I've been to Yuli, Florida. I've been to his high school, Yuli High School, and we were able to see the giant mural of Derrick Henry that's on the side of their football field. It's huge and really cool. And when you come into Yuli, there's actually a sign that recognizes it. Home of Derrick Henry, of course it is. 2015 Heisman Trophy winner. He's won a lot of awards, but Derrick Henry is off to an amazing start in 2021 and that's hard to believe considering the last two years that he's had let's take a look at some of the derrick henry numbers right now right now derrick henry leading the national football league with 113 carries for 510 yards how much does he lead number two on the list in terms of rushing nick chubb is 148 yards or 37 yards per game behind derrick henry at this moment in time the two top rushing games of the 2021 season, Derrick Henry, 182 yards at Seattle and 157 yards at MetLife Stadium last weekend. Derrick Henry is actually looking for what would be his third straight NFL rushing championship. Do you know how many people have done that in NFL history? Is it four? Four is correct. Steve Van Buren tops the list. He was the first man to do it and then the great Jim Brown, who led the league in rushing five straight years, took a year off, and then three straight years again. Our own Earl Campbell from his rookie year through his third year. And then the great Emmett Smith from 1991 through 1993. What do all of those four players have in common outside of three straight rushing titles? They're Hall of Famers. They're all in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So. Lots of good stuff for Derrick Henry. One more great Derrick Henry stat for you. Before rushing for 157 yards last weekend, the 25 games before that one, he had the most productive 25 game stretch in NFL history for a running back. Wow. Topping Barry Sanders, who had a 25 game stretch in 1997 and 1998, where he rushed for nearly 3,200 yards, again, Derrick Henry actually outdid that. So what he's doing on the football field right now is historic. To us, though, what he's doing off the field might even be more special. Well, and he's doing so many things off the field, just as many rushing yards. It's people he's helped. He's been able to give back to kids, to youth who really need things, whether it's school supplies or new bikes or Christmas presents for their family. He's done all of that. He's super involved in Special Olympics. He really takes time to hang out with the athletes. They decorated his cleats for My Cause My Cleats one year. He does so many things to help those athletes really feel like they're involved in the game of football. And then, of course, he's given back to families. He purchased an apartment for a family in need who had lost their home to a tornado. That was such a big deal. He 
outfitted the whole family with new Nike stuff. He brought him to a Titans game. There's so many different things that Derrick Henry is involved in. He is all about helping the community, whether it's here in Nashville or back in Yulee. He wants to be able to spend the time with the people that he's actually helping, and he wants them to know that this is from him, which is such a cool thing. He is talking about it more now, however, with the Two All Foundation. Derek realizes that publicity is a great thing to help that foundation, and hopefully we'll hear a lot more about the special things that he does. Absolutely, the Two All Foundation gives him such a great way to expand his reach and help even more people. So yeah, bring on a little pub, sure. All right, good stuff, and bring on the Jacksonville Jaguars, his hometown team, so to speak. Let's look at Derek's numbers in his last five games against the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's pretty staggering. 104 carries, 740 yards, that's 7.1 per pop, and nine touchdowns. Jacksonville has really improved their run defense, so it'll be harder this weekend. We'll see if the King is able to go to another level against the Jags again this weekend. It's coming back home, and magical things always happen when you go back home. Last year, he rushed for 215 yards at TIAA Bank Field. That's the story of Derrick Henry, who is really probably the biggest story of the Tennessee Titans so far in 2021. One of the other top stories, a second year corner who's playing some outstanding football. Nissan Insider is next as Amy Wells talks with Christian Fulton as Titans All Access continues. Play fake, Wilson with a deep drop, throwing, intercepted Fulton, 45, 40, 35 to the 30. And the Titans have their second takeaway of the year. That's Christian Fulton's second career interception. Here's what I know about him. His first career interception was last year against Jacksonville. Like that. How about a couple other Christian Fulton facts? Yes. Nickname, K-Baby. Strong. At LSU, his roommate, current Titan, Racy McMath. Really? Yes. Can you add something to the Christian Fulton bio? I can. He owns a store in North Nashville. How about and that? He really likes shoes almost as much as you do, Mike Keith. Hmm. There you go. There you go. Christian Fulton was, of course, this week's Nissan Insider, so we sat down to talk about his love of shoes, fashion, and his new store. Check it out. of the essence it ain't always on our side so we gonna live it up because you only get one life i believe it's only one or two places but when you die when you visit you gonna stay so you gotta live it right christian fulton there are so many things that i want to talk to you about i'm so excited to have the chance to sit down with you but i don't want to start with football i want to start off the field and i want to start at your store the trenches why did you pick the name the trenches for a clothing store we wanted it to be something that everybody, you know, could relate to. You know, uh, it's a lot of people that's from there, and that's kind of the environment, you know, that we kind of grew up in. And just the uh, store location where it's at, it kind of reminded us of home, where I'm from New Orleans. That's kind of how we came up with the name. And, you know, it's kind of like the trenches, Titans teeth. So it kind of had a catchy thing to it. So you put it in North Nashville. That's where you decided. What was it about that location? You said it reminds you of home. What about that really struck you? Well, black owned area. You know, they have a couple restaurants over there that's black owned and they have a couple lounges that's over there that's black owned. It's kind of a black owned street. We thought that would be a perfect spot, you know, to where it could be a one-stop shop for everybody that came visit. Victory is all we ever wanted. A little history is all I ever needed. I probably never would have acted how I acted in the past if the future would have ever let me see it. So describe it a little bit, because it's more than just clothes. There's more to the trenches. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we sell uh, streetwear clothes, we sell uh, art, and we sell shoes. We also have a design lab in the back. We'll have TSU uh, interns, uh, those who are graduating, we'll have interns come in and they can work in the back, you know, just to get some experience and just learn how to design, you know, working with people in the retail area, you know. So why so many things? I mean, it's pretty easy to just open a clothing store this is so much more than that. Uh, like, like I said, you know, just wanted to uh, give every, everybody else an opportunity. You know, a lot of people don't have the opportunity growing up. People kind of fall into the uh, high-end luxury brands of uh, clothing stores. So we wanted to give those unknown brands, you know, those uh, black on people brands, you know, an opportunity, you know, to broadcast their talent. Now you're doing this with your brother. Do you always want to go in business with your brother? Sometimes they say, 
Working with family is hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be honest, we, had, we never grew up thinking that, you know, that we wanted to go into business. You know, we kind of uh, stuck to sports. Now, you guys did play together though, right? So you can work together, you can bond, right? Did having that experience playing together take out some of the brotherness that could kind of happen in a business? Yeah, 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 definitely. On the field, you know, once you're playing with each other, you gotta push each other on the field. That's kind of my job, you know, to uh, make sure that he stays on top of his part, you know, in the business side, and he kind of pushes me on the football side. You know, I, he let, I let him handle the business side, and he kind of pushes me on the football side. Now you're in year two. There's a lot of expectations on you, and there's a lot of conversation about what you could be for this Tennessee Titans team. Do you thrive under that pressure, or do you try and stay away from it a little bit? I mean, I try to stay away from it. You know, at the end of the day, football is football for me. So I don't kind of, I don't really go off the expectation everybody else has for me. I go off my expectations, and that's just what puts me every day. There are other younger guys on this team. Caleb Farley was also drafted and has some expectations based on his college play, a lot like what happened for you. How do you help guide someone else, a younger guy, through that same scenario? Just try to give him pointers, you know, what, where I lack that and where I don't want him to lack at, you know, because like I said, the expectations are high, they're going to expect him to come in. So, I mean, I just try to go off my experience and go off the experience that the older guys from last year gave me, you know, it's always good to uh, pass it down to the younger guys. Good stuff with Christian Fulton. They're one of the Titans' many weapons on defense. We're going to talk defense with coordinator Shane Bowen coming up later in the program. But up next, I'm headed out of the Bed MGM studio to talk ball with general manager John Robinson, presented by Duncan. That's next on Titans All Access. Very enthusiastic, Mike. We're talking ball, presented by Duncan, as general manager John Robinson joins us. Glad to have you with us again. I want to start by talking about a couple of young guys who continue to improve. Linebacker David Long, let's start with his performance so far this year. What have you seen from number 51? Yeah, I mean, I think he's got an opportunity to, to go out there with some, you know, because of some injuries, and, and he's maximized that chance, Mike. The thing that I'm probably the most impressed with David is his communication. He's really taking charge out there with, you know, working to get guys lined up, get them in the right spot. He's always had a nose for the football, and he runs around and plays hard. But the communication piece for him has really been impressive. He's gotten better every year. He has. You know, it, we, we talk when we have the off-season meetings, like here's things you need to continue to work on. And to his credit, he works extremely hard during the off-season to prepare himself to play. It's hard to not be a fan of a guy like Jeremy McNichols, who's battled his way onto an NFL roster and now has a role in your offense. Yeah, I mean, he's he's played on about seven or eight different teams. Heck, we've cut him once, and he went to Jacksonville, and we got him back off their practice squad. But, you know, he's a guy that that finally stuck to the plan. You know, the, the NFL uh, career, it's it's a curvy road sometimes. He knew he, where he wanted to end up. You know, he's bought into what we've asked of him, whether it be on special teams, be on third down, punching in on some of those sub runs. You know, we've got to spell Derek. Uh, but has really worked hard, accepted his role, and worked hard to be good at it. All right, the opponent this week, Jacksonville, Got to start with the quarterback, Trevor Lawrence. What do you see? Big, strong, talented, athletic. You know, there's a reason why he was the number one overall pick. He's gotten more accustomed to the pro game. You can tell he's getting a little bit more comfortable in the pocket back there, uh, developing a little rapport with his, you know, supporting cast. And we'll have to do a good job of getting him off the spot and trying to create some uh, confusion for him. Hard not to like Jacksonville's running back, James Robinson, the second year man out of Illinois State. Yeah, an undrafted guy who kind of burst onto the scene last year, you know, he, and he really maximized his chance there in Jacksonville. He's a sturdy runner. He's stable. Uh, he runs between the tackles well. He's got good vision. He's got good instincts. He's got a nice short burst through the, you know, through the line. Catches the ball really well out of the backfield. He's certainly one of the top backs in the league. John, as you look at the statistics, Tennessee offensively and defensively, very impressive in a lot of categories. For you to be more successful overall, is it just simply about refining execution? Yeah, it's it's those it's those plays during the course of a drive, Mike, that you don't execute this properly or a stunt get, doesn't get executed the right way on defense or there's an alignment issue or there's a penalty. There's something that comes up. We've certainly proven that we can get into drives, we can move the ball down the field, we can score touchdowns. Defensively, we can stop people. Even when putting it put in weird situations after a turnover, whatever it may be, we can take the field and we can get stops. And it's those details and continuing to refine those details and the execution of those details throughout the course of the game, uh, which has allowed us to be successful in the games we've won. Go beat Jacksonville. That's the plan, Mike. All right, thanks for talking ball with us. Presented by Duncan, Titans general manager John Robinson. We've got more of the program coming up right after this. 
Welcome back to Titans All Access here in the Bet MGM studio. The Titans defense, not exactly where they want to be right now, but still better than last year at this point, giving up 40 yards less per game, giving up 13% less third down conversions, and playing much better red zone defense statistically. Shane Bowen, the new defensive coordinator, having an impact. He thinks this defense will continue to grow. He is having an impact, and he's doing so as such a young coach. But he's surrounded by some real veteran coaches to help him learn. As we learn more about Shane Bowen, we find out that he's actually younger than Titans punter Brett Kern. Whoa. From the time Shane Bowen was a player at Georgia Tech, and maybe even before, people thought he would be a coach. With an innate understanding of football, Bowen came across to all that knew him as someone that could teach the game at the highest level. And now, with his 35th birthday still two months away, he is running an NFL defensive unit with the Tennessee Titans. Last year, Bowen was calling the defensive signals, but formally was just known as the outside linebackers coach. This offseason, Mike Vrabel named him the defensive coordinator and put Ryan Crow in charge of outside linebackers. The two moves have helped Bowen. Everybody now knows who's in charge of the defense. And without a specific position group to coach, he can be a walk-around coordinator. Being able to get everybody on the same page. We talk about seeing things the same way from the DB room to the linebacker room. And I can be in the DB room and see something and see what, what's going on, how we're telling them, and go directly to the linebackers. Hey, this is how they see this, right? So we're all on the same page. So, I mean, it's been good up to this point, man. I'm excited about the opportunity. I'm going to make the most of it, and the guys have been great, so excited. Shane Bowen is surrounded by a veteran staff on defense, and he leans on them, asks for their input, and welcomes their thoughts. He has also been given an eye in the sky as former Titans defensive coordinator Jim Schwartz was added to the staff. We speak daily about good, bad, indifferent, some operational stuff, how we're going about practice, how we're going about walkthroughs. And really, he's just my check man, so to speak, right? Checking me, making sure we're good. Like, I can turn to him and ask him questions. Hey, how do you do this? Always looking for new ways to do things that's going to be best for our players. I mean, he brings a lot of good ideas in that regard. Bowen makes it clear that he likes this group of defensive players on the Titans roster. He's a huge fan of the guys who were here, for example, Harold Landry and Kevin Byard. But he's also very pleased with the improvement of players like Christian Fulton. He is also pleased with the additions of new Titans throughout the draft and free agency. I love the guys we brought in. I think they're all football guys. I think they love ball. They want to do well. They want to learn. They like the multiplicity that comes with it. And really, they're committed. They're all competitive dudes. I mean, I like their makeup. Like, they're football dudes who are all about ball. Like, none of the prima donna stuff. Like, they want to win, and they're going to do the work and be gritty about it. And that's really what we've been trying to preach and I think we got those type of guys in here. Shane Bowen continues to grow as not just a defensive coordinator, but as a football coach overall. He is smart, true, but his real strength might be his humility. Bowen understands that lessons learned, even during tough times, are valuable to improvement. His biggest lesson from 2020 is one that the 2021 Titans defense is putting into practice. I think the biggest thing is being a unit like ultimately being a unit. I think as a defensive coordinator, you're in charge of the unit. Like it's not the OLBs, it's not the inside backers, it's not the corners, it's everybody. And I think that cohesiveness is gonna be much better this year in that regard, just making sure we're all together and everybody's on their P's and Q's in this shot. Nobody's getting overlooked. I think the exciting part of Shane Bowen and the Titans defense, it's going to continue to get better. Absolutely. There's, there's a foundation there, and you can continue to grow and grow and grow. It's going to be fun to watch. The Titans need that foundation to grow this weekend as they go to Jacksonville to take on Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars. When we come back, it's time for Mike Keith's Keys, the best part of the show. Ooh, thanks. It's coming. Welcome back to Titans All Access. We have reached the highlight of the show. It's Mike Keith's keys. Mike, the Titans are going to Jacksonville. They're taking on the Jags. Give us some keys to victory. Find a way to run the ball. Jacksonville's run defense is much improved. We talked earlier in the show about how good Derrick Henry has been against the Jags in the last five games. Bottom line, they're going to do everything they can to stop him. 
Titans can't care about that. They have to find a way to get Henry going and run the football effectively, especially with all their injuries right now. It's maybe even more important. Key number two. Uh, don't let Trevor Lawrence run. Trevor Lawrence is 6'6 and is very, very mobile. He can make a lot of things happen with his legs. It feels like Jacksonville is trying to get some designed runs for him right now to help their offense and help him along. Don't let him get going with his legs. He's going to throw it, and he'll throw it well, but don't let him beat you with big plays on the run. All right, what's the final key? Splash plays. The New York Jets had five splash plays against the Titans, plays of 29 yards or longer. Titans didn't have any. Those big plays are so important in NFL games because it is hard to drive the ball and drive the ball and drive the ball. You need some big plays. The Titans need to get back on track this weekend with some big gainers, and they certainly don't need to allow Jacksonville to have any of those splash plays. Well, I do love a good splash play. I know you do. I really you do. You often mention that. Yeah, I know. I say it a lot, but it's true. Titans and Jags kickoff set for noon central time. We're on the air on Titans Radio at 11 a.m. Central with Titans Countdown, Amy Wells and Rhett Bryant. We hope you'll join them and all of us for the game broadcast on Sunday. Titans and the Jags, let's get to 3-2 and 2-0 and two and oh in the AFC South. Woohoo! Woohoo indeed. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.